Welcome sports fans, welcome back to another episode. I am your host, Joe Mar. I am Rush. And this is This Are That Sports TV, the place you guys come to get the best, most interesting and everything sports topics, discussions and debates on the internet. Yes, people. Bad day. Not a good day. Nothing a good mood. And today, it, you know, last video we start the video, I may say, oh, bro, your mood looks so like, you know, you know, you know the vibes with the game. Right now, I'm not going to trouble you. Right now, it's justified. I'm going to do a match review, bro. Suriname versus Jamaica. Suriname won, Jamaica won. I'd say an embarrassing game, an embarrassing performance, an embarrassing squad. I'm embarrassed. What's your initial reaction to the game, bro? Or three words. Mm. Four words. How much me give a ago? I told you so. Four words. No, nah, bro. Yeah, bro. No, nah, fam. I, I, I literally said this. People, yeah, go back go back and watch. Go back and watch our match preview. I guess it's a bit redundant to watch it right now. But if you want to see me make a very accurate prediction as to how I expect that this team would look versus this Suriname team, exactly what I predicted would have happened, ended up happening. So, yeah, right. Right, so some of, the, some of the things that happened, bro, you couldn't have predicted that. You understand? Like five starters not being there, our goalkeeper and captain not being there, one of our best players in Ravel Morris not being there. Yeah, but when you say five, our red striker Shemar Nicholson not being there, like yeah, but when you said five of our starters not being there, define the term starter, because when we think about a lot of players who weren't called, who would have been starters like. I, I, and Ethan Pinnock or Mikhail Antonio, wouldn't you say that, that those are starters as well? So that's what seven of our starters. Then the, point, no, the point I'm making is the point I'm making is starter. the point I'm making is the prediction that we made was based on the squad list that we saw. No, we made up we, we made our prediction on that. We went into the game with even a weaker squad than we saw than that 23 that we picked our squad but based. A, a part of a part of our prediction, weren't we predicting? That for whatever reason, the squad that we hope and expect to start would not be the squad that starts. True. But I, was, I was also expecting a stronger squad. Yeah, but we said, and we did say that after we gave our proposed squad, that Paul Hall will go ahead and not start the squad that we said he was going to start. So we did expect a weakened squad that we could have fielded. We not literally said that, was, that, that, was, that that's what was going to happen. Not this, but and, and if I knew. If I saw the squad list before I made my predictions, come on. You really think would anybody would have predicted this Jamaica team to, to damage or beat this Suriname team? Not at all. But you got it right. We drew the game 1 1. But yeah, let's talk about it a little bit and then we're going to do some um, match ratings. So the game, bro. Jamaica started the game. But I say we start flat. But both teams start, started flat. And I wonder, I watch the game. I say there's not much in this game. You know? And then I think about it a little bit. Obviously, the game done a couple of hours now. I mean, I digest it. I mean, I say, all right. Why this game looks so flat? You know, sometimes the game looks flat because it's two good teams, two two very tactical um, teams. You know, where the schemes are just matching up and they're just equal each each other out. But that was not the case today. It was just two poor teams, and that's why the game looked like that. Suriname was not great, and Jamaica was not great. So they both had their chances. They both they both made mistakes, and I feel like a one one. It's a very, I'm not going to say good result, but it defines the game and it's justified. A very, one a very, is, is a perfect a result. Fair it reflects, result. Yeah, it reflects, it reflects the game. This game, no, none of these teams deserve to, to win the game. Now, some players on the pitch, you would say, maybe deserve to win the game, but not the overall team. What do you say? Um, as I said, initially, um, from a regular boys' perspective, when we started the game, we were we we're kind of taking it to them. Like we we're possessing the ball, we we're getting forward. Um, but we, they were we, looked, we looked very they were they were they weren't taking it to us, they were getting counters. So we were we were like we were um possessing the ball, we we're playing the balls in their half, but we looked unpolished in their half, and they broke really quickly towards the wings and they were getting in squares, and that's how they got some very, very good opportunities. In the first half and the counter attack however as they settled into the game you know it became more as i said flat where neither team seemed for the longest while well, seemed to be threatening the other team um the quality on the pitch was was lacking to a great extent 
um, the likes of, as I said, Tariq McGee and Devon Williams, um, Kevin Lambert, they just weren't up to scratch. Like you can see the, the, the lacking quality um, and you can see how it, it prevented us from getting forward efficient. Junior Fleming did not have a bad game. You know, he was he was um one who uh, who was constantly attempting to make things happen. You know, he was making runs. I think I thought at some point he could have been more unselfish. You know, oftentimes he opted to take a wild shot rather than make um the simple pass. But we saw him tracking back, we saw him making tackles, so he looked all right. But in the grand scheme of things, as I said, one one a fair result. You know, I think it's the result that that the game deserved. You know, both teams never played very well. And there are other conditions, I think, the turf. Mm -hmm. um, playing on artificial turf, it really affects the football. So that also that also led to the game not being as, as good as it's supposed to be. So there are numerous factors why I think the game was so poor. But I think the main factor is just that neither team had the quality. And as you alluded to, um, there are many late omissions from this squad. Let's talk about reason. it a little bit. Let's talk about the missing for players, bro. Um, for reasons that we can speculate, because I haven't heard any official word, mm -hmm. but I genuinely do believe that the likes of Ravel Morrison and Shamar Nicholson and Jamal Lowe probably opted not to play a Nations League game versus Suriname, who we should be able to handle without those guys on um, artificial surface in Suriname, especially when playing um, Suriname and Mexico again. So... I thought those guys opted out of it, but that's just me speculating. But I genuinely do believe that that's the reason. You know, what, what other reason would there be to not play? And some of the players traveled. You know, I, yeah, well, yeah. I can't say where they where they traveled to, but I know that Shaman Nicholson was at the, on the plane to wherever the plane left from when they left Jamaica. Yeah. Left to whenever they left Jamaica. Mm -hmm. So I assume that Shaman Nicholson was in Suriname. Why he didn't play? No clue. As you say, we can speculate and say it's a turf. And... I would like to agree with you because without those players, bro, we still should be able to pull off a one nil against Serena. Sure. So maybe Paula looked at it and said, "All right, guys, I understand the concern. All right, let's go with our, let's go with a weakened team. Remain tight. We still have okay. a Liam on the pitch. We still have a one of the leading goal scorers in the JPL on the pitch. We should be able to score a goal. We still have our our best centre back, Damian Lowe. We still have a prodigy, um, Richard King." Javier Brown, you know where I do. We're supposed to be able to beat this team. You know, at the time, Andre Blake, before he couldn't play the game. We were supposed to beat this team. Even All right. Player ratings, bro. Real quick. All right. So um, let's start out, start out with Amal Knight. Mm -hmm. So until, um, at what point was the goal scored? In what minute was, was the own goal scored? Let's make a check. Yeah. All right. The goal was scored in the 83rd minute. 83rd, 84th minute. Up until the 84th minute, Amal Knight was by far and away the best player on the field, either team, by far. And he would have easily been the man of the match had it not been for that one unfaithful moment. Mm -hmm. He was so good. You know, he was, he was dominative in his box. He made amazing saves. He distributed the ball very quickly. You know, he was very confident on his feet and he was catching absolutely everything. He was literally a 9 out of 10 up to that point. But in the 84th minute, that is the worst couple of seconds of goalkeeping I think I have probably ever seen in my whole entire life. Yeah. At, at such a high level. Mm -hmm. That is the absolute worst goalkeeping I've ever seen at such a high level. Like, it, it was so bad. It's, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely like incredible. So to that point, 84 minutes into the game, man of the match, 9 out of 10 rating. And just because of that, I think that alone had to bring him down to a, to a 6. You know, some people might go lower, but I really do think that he did make some outstanding saves. Like the first save he made in the game and the, the save he made after he conceded the goal and hope and his play in the overall game, like being dominating his box and distributing the ball, I think that alone can get him to the six point. But the mistake, uh, I, I'll give him a five. I agree with you. He was very good, especially you know in the first half and even the early the later and early parts of the second half. Yeah. Because even after after they scored that free kick, he made a, a really good save. 
I remember early in the game, he went down to his left and he made a good save. So he was catching the balls, the distribution was good, starting the play early, not holding on to the ball too long. Mm -hmm. So he was doing good. But bro, you have to look at, well, not, you don't have to, but I look at the impact of the mistake that he made. And he must forget grade down harder than that. So I, I'll go a five. I'll go a five. I'll go a little under average. So a five from a five from me for Amal Knight. It's just this would have this would have probably definitely been have been his best game ever. Yeah, it would have easily been his best game at this level. Easily. He was he was he was impeccable to that point. He was so good. Yeah. He was like, he was so good to that point. It was actually surprising to me how good he was to that point. And I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going to be said. But yeah, that's why I give him a six because he really, really, really was outstanding to that point. All right, let's go to the left back, Ricardo Thomas. Ricardo Thomas. Um, before he got hurt, he's not up to scratch. You know, um, I um, based on the game in Catalonia, I was saying okay, he yeah. warranted a call up if there wasn't any other left back. You get me? So I think he would have been a good shot for backup left back if they failed to call the likes of Greg Lee or Maribel. And um, and Kemar Lawrence, which they failed to call two of, of the aforementioned three, and mm -hmm. apparently Amari Bell opted out of this one, or Paul Hall decided to leave most. I'm not sure why, but I think that's a turf situation as well. Anyways, Ricardo Thomas, he wasn't great. He was caught out of position. You know, he was being beaten a lot of the time, and in attack, he he was losing the ball too much high up the field, getting caught out. So I have to go ahead and give him a five. Yeah, not, not not a great performance by Ricardo Thomas. Yeah, I'll give him a five. Also, uh, little under average. Um, we know that he's one of the players that we we'll said not he's not quite at the level to be representing Jamaica, but he's there and we're supporting supporting him. So I guess we want to see him, you know, do his best and prove us wrong. But again, some of these players show us why they should not be a part of this. Mm -hmm. And I want to be proven wrong. I want them to show me that hey, a foolish is their chat, and I am. Ricardo Thomas from the JPL. And I might as well be playing in England because, because I'm at that level. But sad to say you're not. And um hope you improve, but average under uh yeah, a five. A little under average. Let's go with Damien Low. Um Damien Low, uh, you know, he was he was pretty solid throughout the game. He made he made um he was covering very well, he made very good tackles. He was the same usual aggressive Damien Low. And he made some good passes, but he made some wayward passes. Um, I would say, um, especially the fact that we, we conceded and we were dominated by the from the wings, I wouldn't say it's his fault. But he did make one mistake that almost led to a goal. <clears throat> um, so I'll give them a six. It was a pretty standard game. Not okay. bad, but not not very good. Yeah, Damien Lowe was average for me also. Not much to add to what you said. Six for Damien Lowe. Richard King. I'd, I'd give Richard King um, a, a six and a half. I give Richard King a six and a half. He did make some crucial tackles. You know, he 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 was, I would say, relatively flawless today. You know, he looked very standard. However, however, um, he can't concede to Serena. I don't care about how it happened. You get me? I said we sustained a bit too much pressure sometimes. Sometimes he wasn't as confident as he should be, but overall, a standard performance. Good at a six and a half for Richard King. Yeah, I'm going to give Richard King a six. Um, average performance. He was not a part of the the, the goal that we conceded. Nobody was the part of the goal except the goalkeeper. That was literally all I'm on night. So you can't. Right. So, yeah, so that's why I'm not really grade him down for the for, for the fact that we conceded. What? What I wanted to grade him down for was the fact that they were getting too many chances on goal. But a lot of the chances that they got, when I when I really think about it, those chances were caused because of the midfield. Yep, the midfield. Yeah, was the midfield. midfield so we can't even grade down the defenders for the fact that they yeah. are left open. So yep. Richard King, six. Javian Brown. Yeah, I would have said, I would, I said 6.5 because I do believe he's a bit better than Damien Brown. Right. Um, Javian, Javian Brown, he got an assist. Mm -hmm. So that's good. But like Javin Brown, um, he was inconsistent in today's game. He did make some mistakes. You know, he did make some wayward passes and um his assists carry some weight, but I think he didn't have his greatest game. And he's been he's been 
a bit inconsistent for Jamaica recently. But yeah, I'd go six and a half because he got the assist. But yeah, he could yeah, have been more right. defensively. I agree with you. I'm going to go six and a half also. Assists, obviously, if you contribute to a goal, you're going to get, you know, marks for that. And it, uh, the goal started and he made a, an aggressive yeah. going forward, getting the ball mm -hmm. and forward. So, yeah, really he caused a turnover. So, I, I agree with you. I'm going to give him some points for that. Defensively, I feel like most of their attacks and the, the, the more dangerous attacks came down the left or left side, to be totally honest. The crosses that came in were, re, was really from the left side. Um, so, but in terms of him being on the ball, passing the ball, it was you know, hit and miss a lot of the times. So they got a few, they got a few chances from the right side too. They yeah, but I feel like the most dangerous attacks never come from a Javian Brown being out of position or a Javian Brown mistake. I feel like a lot of them came from either centrally through the midfield or a pull back from I the I remember instant. There was a time when 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 somebody beat Javian Brown on the wing, they um pass it back to the central and the central attempted to play like a slip through while but he overplayed it. That stemmed mm -hmm. from Javier and Brown's side. So there, there were a few chances from Javier and Brown's side as well. Right. He was super solid. All right. I don't quite remember it, but I just, if, you say, if you say I believe it. But yeah, six and a half for me also. All right, let's go to the midfield. Lambert. Four. Four. That yeah. four. Lambert is just not ready. He, he looks slow, chip. His touches weren't that great. His passes weren't that great. He looked very lackadaisical. He was out of position a lot of the times. He just really was not ready. Lambert just isn't ready. Like, his turns are too slow. Like, I can't remember him doing anything good today. Honestly. Yeah. yeah I do. A four might be generous. Yeah. I'm going to go a, a bit low. I'm going to go three. He's not, not quite at the level for a Jamaican call-up as yet. He's one of the players that wants too much time on the ball. One of the players that takes too long to make up his mind doesn't know his next pass. Um, wasn't I feel like a lot of the, if you, if you if you're watching the game and you look at some of the chances that they got, they were pullbacks to to the edge of the box. Yep. He was always not tracking the late runner yep. into the box, and that's the defensive yep. midfielder's job. So I figured him down for that. Always out of position. Um, transitioning the ball from and defense to attack, he was not really. What you say? From those opportunities, they got two shots that they could have easily scored from. Yeah. Let them kick over the post and one that I'm on I say. So yeah. two shots from cutbacks, like squares down the left left wing and a, a, a square delivered to the top of the box where Kevin Lambert is nowhere inside. Yeah, most importantly, where he's not picking up his man. Mm -hmm. Isn't it? So you may have to get him down for that, bro. Three, not quite at the level. Speedy. Um, Devon Williams, five. You know, um, sometimes he looked... Okay, you know, sometimes he was making good passes, sometimes he was making good turns, but other times he was just losing position, you know, causing us, causing a lot of pressure on us. And other times he wasn't making good passes. And as I said, his turns still aren't definitive enough. He got more space in this game than he's accustomed to. So he didn't look as as um amateur as he normally does. But I still think a five, like pretty average game, and he made too many mistakes for me to give him anything higher than that. Yeah, I'm going to also give him a five. He started, I, I feel like um, Speedy started the game well. You now, watching him, I was like, all right, turning quickly, passing the ball, not taking too many touches on the ball. Doing well, but then he just tapered off while the game went on. So, five. Wasn't a great game from Speedy. Yeah. Um, I feel like we always get five and sixes from Speedy, though. You're, you're not going to really get an eight or a nine from Speedy, but you're really not going to get a one or a two from Speedy either. I feel like it's always like a five or a six. He's the same player in every game. Control and pass. If you get some forward passes, you get enough. So, <laughs> a five from me. Let's go Tyreek McGee in the midfield. Tyreek McGee. All right. Tyreek McGee, five. Five. Um, I was expecting more from him. Mm -hmm. And then finally get the opportunity again. Tyreek McGee always just seems a bit too weak. He's a bit too slow on the ball um, for this level. He definitely, when he gets time on the ball, he shows that he technically can make things happen because I saw him make some good long passes and I saw him make some good decisions only when given time on the ball. But when not given as much time on the ball as, as I guess he's accustomed to, he loses it and he puts us under pressure and he doesn't track very well. So a five for me for Tyreek Maggi. Um, in the game, when we don't have the ball, Tyreek Maggi offers nothing at yeah. all. Like zero. We get nothing from Tyreek Maggi when we don't have the ball. 
going forward, I feel like he's also one, same thing with for Lambert, he's also one of those players that wants too much time on the ball. You don't have that much minute, you don't have that much time, and you don't get to take that many touches. Like, I feel like Tyreek Maggie take three, four, five touches to make a 10 yard pass, but I'm going to say at the end of the game, like, why you have to take three, three touch for pass the ball to speed it right this time? Like, I almost feel like you don't know your next pass. And as a creative midfielder, you have to know every single pass by the field before you even get the ball. Yeah. Listen me, so I wasn't I wasn't pleased with Tyreek McGee. In the first half, though, it was a bit hit and miss because he was making some good passes. I see him, mm-hmm. you know, body feeling some players working the ball out of tight spaces. But then as the game went on again, we just see the old habits coming back. One, yeah, yeah. two, many touches, losing the ball in the midfield, causing pressure on us, not tracking back. Like we can go on and on. We got nothing from Tyreek McGee. I was I was begging for the sub to admit, like I, I, it was all, it was almost as if I was psyche. Um yeah. where I was like Okay, we can't be carrying Paris around now. And then as soon as I said that, I saw the change being made. Because I was like, yeah, Tyreek McGee, he started off, and as you said, he tapered off, and it was his time. His time had expired. So I, I gave him a five. You never rate him. Oh, yeah. I also gave him a five. Yeah. Probably a four, to be honest. It wasn't great. It wasn't great. But All right. Great. Let's go. Junior Fleming. Junior Fleming, um, I guess from the Jamaica perspective, he has to bear one of the match today. You know, and I'd go ahead and give him a 7.5. You know, as I said before, he 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 tracked back, he made some tackles, and I think he was good on the ball for the most part. You know, I, I think oftentimes he opted he, he opted to go selfish option, taking wild shots that weren't really necessary. But I guess that's a testament to his ambition and to his his, his drive to do well. Um, but getting in good positions, and I think he was solid today, pretty good player. He is one of those players that I guess is attempting to prove the pundits wrong, which I don't mind being proved wrong. So he was the only player today that I was like, yeah, uh, good game, Flemo. And a very, very well taken goal. Mm-hmm. So, seven and a half. Um, I must say, before me even you know, going to Fleming's performance, Junior Fleming's have never been one of my favorite reggae boys um, over, say, the past three, four years. But Junior Fleming's is growing on me. I feel like he's improving a lot. I feel like in football, intelligence is also improving. Um, his decision making is, is improving. A lot you know, further to go, but it's improving. I feel like, you know, watching Junior Fleming two years ago, he's always passing when he should shoot. He's always shooting when he should pass. He's always dribbling when he should pass. You know, making bad decisions all the time. But I feel like he's improving. I like the intent. Junior Fleming, like, I feel like for the past... Five games I'm watching him always look like one of our most dangerous players. Junior Fleming's almost look more dangerous than Liam Bailey. In fact, in this yeah. game, he looked more dangerous than Liam Bailey. He was more dangerous than Liam Bailey. You get me? So Junior Fleming's a group on me. I'll give him a I'm not gonna go quite as high as a 7.5 because nobody you know, if you had nobody I go up to them levels there. But seven, a seven from Junior Fleming is definitely the best outfield player and the Jamaica man of the match. So Junior Fleming's yeah. a seven. Liam Bailey. All right, so Leon Bailey, Leon Bailey, I would go ahead and give Leon Bailey a, a six. You know, um, I'll go ahead and give him a six. I think, honestly, Leon Bailey could have been better. I think he was hobbled for the most part. He went down early, early, early in the game, and I was like, oh, my God, is this it? Is he done? But he wasn't, so thank God for that. Um, oftentimes, he tried to run at players, but I just don't think he was very special. You know, he, he wasn't special. He didn't do anything that great. So I have to give Leon Bailey a, a six, very average. And he did get a chance that I think he should have shot on goal and made something happen, and he didn't. Yeah, I agree with you. Leon Bailey was average today. Um, I keep, every time I watch Leon Bailey for Jamaica, I'm expecting him to be the best player in the park. Yeah. And too often, he's not looking like the best player in the park. He's just looking like another good player. You know, the touches are good. The control is good. You're running at players is good. The crosses are good. The corners are good, but he's just not special. He's, he doesn't look special on the pitch, and I want to say, I feel like if we're watching Liam Bailey against Suriname, there, there's no reason for Liam Bailey not to have five shots. No reason, absolutely no reason. And I'm not seeing it. I want Liam Bailey to, the, to, to be the Liam Bailey that we saw at Bayer Leverkusen as, a, as a, somebody that commented on one of our videos said. I want to see the dangerous 30 million signing for Aston Villa. I want to see that Monday. I want to see you know, the best Jamaican player right now. I'm not seeing that. But the average performance, still a decent day on the park. But by his standards, not great. Let's go for a striker at a fire by grave. 
Atta Firebagger, the only thing Atta Firebagger did today was make rash, reckless challenges that I could not wrap my head around. He did it like three or four times, and I'm like, why is this man just bulldozing this place? Just go around and make a tackle. Literally. Like, so Bargrave was a non-factor today. There has to be a three for me. Mm. An absolute mm. non-factor. As yeah. a four, did he even take a shot at goal? I can't remember a shot from Bargrave. Again. Three again, bro, we're playing against a, a team that's around 15. That, yeah, we know that the, this, the ranking is misleading at the moment. They are a better team than 15. And I'm sure their ranking will go, will go over go after, up after this competition or maybe over the next year. But playing against a team that's around 15 in CONCACAF. Why are, and you're the striker. Why are you not having a shot on goal? Why are you not getting in positions? And I'm yet to understand why he's in the squad in terms of what does he offer to the squad? Is it pace? Is it being a fox in the box, knowing where to be when? In being clinical as a striker? I still can't really wrap my head around what exactly Atta Firebagrave offers to the reggae boys squad at the moment. We can pin by and say, is it his it, ability to, to be a pivot and make passes from the first nine position? What is the role? I don't know at the moment what his role is, and I don't know what the be, what's the best thing that he, that he does on the pitch for Jamaica. I don't know. Hoping to see it, but I don't know. And again, he's one of those players that is proving us right. And I don't want to be proven right. I want to be proven wrong. Show me that you are supposed to be playing for the reggae boys. Show me that you're at the level. Because right now, Bygrave don't like him there at the level for play for the reggae boys, bro. Looks far off it, to be honest. I don't know if Bygrave would get into that Suriname team. I'm being 100% honest, bro. I was watching the game today. I mean, I said, would Bygrave make this Suriname team? Probably That's around 15. And I don't think he would. But he's playing for the sixth round mm -hmm. reggae boys. Probably not. That's it. I'm Paul. No, we have some subs. Kaim Paris. Yeah. That's, um, Kaim Paris. I like said he came on. And I don't think he was very good either. But he made a good pass. I'll just go ahead and give him a six. Um, five. Never really do. Oh, he Kaim, was Kaim Paris the one that set up um Green for the for yeah, the for yeah, yeah. game winner. Yeah, what's his pass? I feel like him. He, he was on long enough to really do much. But I give him a six. I agree with you. With the little time that he got, he created something. So may I give him a six. Um, let's go for Campbell, Kenry Campbell. Um, Campbell, he was he was a, a, a bright spark. Um, I liked what I saw. I liked what I saw when he came on. He re he really gave us something going forward, and he was aggressive um, as a defender. You know, um, six. Uh, I'd give him a six. Um, very. Um, I would say very optimistic with what he came on and had to offer. You know, yeah. he was better. He was better than Thomas. I can say that much. All right. Um, I'll give him a five. Me never see. Me never see much. Yeah, me see the energy, but me never really see the quality shining during the game. So me I go go five. Let's go, Daniel Green, the last player. They were going to the coach and wrap it up. Daniel Green, um, two. Like he came on, he got the chance to to to, to prove us wrong, and he absolutely did not. So what more can I say? I feel like Daniel Green is one of those players that also is showing me that he's not quite at the level. Still waiting for him to show me why he's in the squad. I, I'm also going to share the point that I made it about Bygrave with him. What does Daniel Green offer to the squad? Like, why is he in the squad? What attributes does he bring to the reggae boy squad? Still not sure. I'm still not seeing him being clinical. I'm still not seeing him being the goal scoring, assist making player that he is in the JPL. I'm not seeing it. So, I'm going to go for, for Daniel Green. Um, underwhelming. Yes. Let's go, Paul. Um, what can I say? Like, Paul. Hall... <laughs> he, he says he wants to, to, to play. A more possessive game, a more dominating game. And we saw increments of that where at times he attempted to have his team move the ball and try to be possessive. But it was without effect for the most part. Like his position didn't lead too much at the end of the day. The one goal that we did score came from 
Javin Brown winning the ball close to the half line on the right side, pushing it forward and scoring it into Junior Fleming. Like we didn't see much effectiveness from this team. Like I didn't even see much intention or assisting per se today. You get me? I said he he played the, the, the 4 3 3, which is different than what we've grown accustomed to. And I was like, okay, let's see how he manages to put this group of players together. And to be honest, it didn't look great. So yeah. I don't know what rating I can give Paul Hall, but it can't be anything good. I can tell you that. I'm not give Paul Hall a two, brother. I'm not seeing nothing inspired. I'm not seeing nothing more, more believing. Huh? At the moment, the verdict is still out, and the verdict is out too long now, brother. At this point, we should have known where I get from Paul Hall. With, yeah. with this team, yes, it is a weakened team, but we should be putting in a, putting in a better performance than this against so, you know? mm -hmm. We should. So I can't give anything greater than a two. I'm probably a bit generous. You need to get a grip of your team also. Like, this team is just not inspiring. It's not giving me any confidence. And the coach, it starts with the coach. Like, yeah. yet, I must say, I have to give him some props. I kind of like the press conference. I'm going to like some of the things I'm saying. I'm going to like some of the things I'm saying. You know, and players' commitment and stuff like that. But still need to get a whole line squad. Still need to figure out exactly what I'm going. Still need to be a little bit more transparent with the fans. So yes. that we can stop call you upon them thing, yeah? but not inspiring at all. I mean, I love it. So a two for a two for me from football. Yeah, as I said, bro, transparency is something that I want to see. Um and consistency. And we just need good players on the field, bro. It starts from there. Because to be honest, with the team that he put out on the field, there's not much he could have gotten. I did see where. Junior Fleming and Leon Bailey kind of came inside more and was attempting to, to take up the creative role, but not enough from Paul Hall. Needs, yeah. needs to do more. Yeah, I hate that. Good look at reason about the game. Um, yeah, on to the next one. National Stadium. We will be there, people. We will be there. Also, now let's see some, yeah, see some little you know, new content from we. We're going to try to go live before the game, you know, inside of the stadium. Showing some scenes when they never see it, if we're not there at the game. Um, some close-ups when they never even get close to by themselves. So, only for exciting content coming. And this one, yeah, though. And as I said, bro, we, 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 we're going live tomorrow, right? We should be. Exactly. So, um, in our live tomorrow, whether it be a long one or a short one, we'll be going live. We'll be talking to the people. And we'll be giving you more, more hints as to what's to come on Tuesday, you know? Yeah, but for now, people hate this. In my yes. performance from the reggae boys, we'll eat more adjectives. We're gonna make it so bad. As we said, bro, the reggae boys' performance, the reggae boys, the reggae boys' performance was embarrassing. But this are that sports TV's review was the complete opposite. And because of that, people, what I want you to do is like, subscribe, and share the video to at least five people. Because if you guys can get us five subscribers. Each one of you guys can get us five subscribers. Do you know how many subscribers that would get us by the end of the day? So, people, we are putting the work. And the content is good, right? Is this thing right. Yeah, people, but for now. So, this is Sports TV. And we're out. Hey, dog.